हेलो एवरी वन सो वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट लीनियर एल्जेब्रा एंड इन लीनियर एल्जेब्रा योर मेट्राइस एंड द वैक्टर्स आई एक्सप्लेन इन यस्टरडेज क्लास आई टोल्ड द डिफरेंस बिटवीन दीज टू what does vectors means and what does matrix means okay so vectors are 1d matrices we can have 2d matrix 3d matrix then we are having tensors okay so vectors are used to locate a point point while matrix is a representation where you can put the values of your data data set just like in a 2d or 3d representation format okay so if i am having only a row so this is a vector because this is 1d if i am having two or more than two rows so this is like 2d and i can show the values here okay so this is matrix then we came across the properties of vectors and the matrices okay one important operation was to find the rank of a matrix okay that means linearly independent and then the last topic of the previous class was your transpose okay so i told that you can calculate transpose of a matrix by simply converting rows to columns or columns to rows this is called as a transpose it's an important operation we will be using this operation in your different requirements for solving a matrix all right fine then next comes the topic determinant okay let me talk about the determinants i'm sharing the entire screen okay and then study about the determinants okay so here it is determinant again it's a important mathematical concept in matrix algebra which is having wide range of applications and ultimately it gives a scalar value that means it solves a matrix it solves a square matrix okay determinant solves a square matrix and what is a square matrix a square matrix is a matrix whose rows and columns are equal this is a square matrix so if you do have a square matrix you can apply determinant and uh, the solution of a determinant will be a scalar value fine so as we have seen calculation of a area volume of geometric figures we do use determinant only in case of our data science and machine learning we are using the determinant in uh, algorithms like principal component analysis linear discriminant analysis lda which are very important algorithms for dimensionality reduction okay dimensionality reduction means we are going to reduce the dimensions of data by using this algorithm 
so determinant this mathematical matrix algebra is used for this purpose okay so determinant of a square matrix remember not a matrix a square matrix is a scalar value okay which is used for interpretation like calculating area of a parallelogram volume of a parallelopoid so area volume calculation determinant is used in order to find the inverse of a matrix here also determinant is used so if determinant is non zero then your matrix can be inversed else it is not if determinant is zero matrix is singular it cannot be inversed okay then in linear transformations also we are going to use the determinant for scaling that means if determinant is one the transformation is same however if it is minor minus one the transformation is flipped that means minus one shows the reflection okay and if it is greater than zero then the transformation enlarges the volume if it is between zero to one then it is going to reduce the volume shrink so in transformations also we are going to use the determinants for this purpose then we are having kramer's rule in kramer's rules solving system of linear equations there are also determinant is used solving system of linear equations we'll see now again very important to find eigen values so determinant of a matrix is related to eigen values okay so in matrices i hope you have heard these terms eigen value eigen vectors two things are there okay eigen value lambda eigen vectors v very important and as i told above a algorithm name pca principal component analysis it uses these things eigen value and eigen vectors okay so we do apply this determinant in characteristic equation i will show you fine so determinant is a crucial concept in linear algebra it has wide range of applications okay and this is how you do compute the determinant here you can see we are having a matrix 2 0 okay it's a very simple matrix okay let me stop this okay so determinant here you are calculating like 2 into 1 minus of minus of 0 into minus 1 so this term will become 0 answer should have to be 2 this is how you calculate the determinant this is 2 cross 2 matrix so very easy determinant calculation at most we go like 3 cross 3 matrix okay 3 cross 3 so like you are having entries 1 2 1 then 2 1 2 then 1 2 1 for example this is your 3 cross 3 matrix and if i need to calculate the determinant of it then it is given like this take this one and in bracket okay you have to consider this portion so 1 into 1 minus 2 into 2 okay i took this and then okay this is a matrix and i solved it 1 into 1 minus 2 into 2 plus take this 2 okay and then you have to consider you have to consider now see the order what i am taking 
see when you are going to take this number you have to hide this column and this row so you are left with 2 2 1 1 2 2 1 1 so here the order of multiplication will be 2 into 1 minus 2 into 1 this will be the order okay so 2 into 1 that is 2 minus 2 into 1 is 2 see again i am telling the order multiply with this then minus this you might see you might see one more thing that means somewhere they they take minus sign outside minus so you can do that you can take minus and the order which i have applied just change the order then you can do 2 into 1 minus 2 minus 2 into 1 this is also possible but you have to keep minus and outside and if you are not keeping minus and outside you are just keeping plus then use the order which i told 2 into 1 and 2 into 1 like this okay plus okay take this one and hide this row this column now i am having this thing okay 2 into 2 minus 1 into 1 so outside 1 2 into 2 is 4 minus 1 so 1 into minus 4 is minus 3 4 into 1 is 3 0 answer is 0 so actually determinant tells your area volume occupied by a figure okay in geometrical expect now this is what we consider related to the determinant okay fine so you do apply this concept like a uh, determinant and uh, in linear algebra as i told that there are some algorithms and in matrix also we have to calculate the inverse these are the places where determinant is helpful okay now eigen stuff and characteristic equation that means eigen values and the eigen vectors these two things is very important concepts in linear algebra and it is used in math science and most of the machine learning i already told that the algorithms are developed over this mathematical concepts eigen vectors and the eigen values why because eigen eigen values represents information okay eigen values means information and eigen vectors means in which direction this information is projected okay so eigen values means information and eigen vectors are the direction okay in which in which this information this information is projected so very important concept eigen values and eigen vector in terms of linear algebra and machine learning data science so eigen vectors are actually now they are the pillars of matrix they are the fundamental information about the specific matrix and the algorithm principal component analysis we are going to use this concept so don't forget this line which i told eigen values are the information eigen vectors are the direction in which this information is projected okay fine so here is some maths i am having example okay so if you are having a square matrix a remember each and every word term which has been written here focus upon this thing you are having a square matrix that means a matrix whose rows and columns are same you are having a scalar quantity lambda this is eigenvalue of a and there exists a non-zero vector which is called as eigenvector for a 
ओके सो वेन ए ऑपरेट्स ऑन वी द रिजल्ट इज अ स्केलर मल्टीपल ऑफ वी ओके इट इज रिटर्न एस ए वी इक्वल टू लैमड़ा वी ओके सो वेन ए ऑपरेट्स ऑन वी दैट मीन्स ए डॉट वी द आंसर इज लैमड़ा इन टू वी ओके वेर लैमड़ा इज योर आइगन वैल्यू वी इज द आइगन वैक्टर ओके सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दिस कॉन्सेप्ट ए इज अ स्क्वायर मैट्रिक्स ओके सो लेट्स टेक एन एग्जाम्पल हाउ दिस थिंग गोस वी आर हैविंग अ मैट्रिक्स फोर वन टू थ्री दिस इज टू क्रॉस टू मैट्रिक्स सो ऑब्वियसली इट्स अ स्क्वायर मैट्रिक्स ओके नाउ वॉट यू आर हैविंग एन इक्वेशन एस ए वी इक्वल टू लैमडा वी Your a is four one two three. Your a is four one two three. V equal to lambda v. Okay, let me. Uh, I think let me simplify the concept more. Uh, okay, in a simple way, a v. Equal to lambda v. You do one thing. A v minus lambda v equal to zero. That means you are just taking lambda v this uh, on the left hand side. Okay, and then take take v common from here. A Minus lambda v equal to zero. Take v common from here, so it will look like this. Lambda is a scalar quantity. A is a matrix, so it's better to rewrite in this way, where i is an identity matrix. Okay, identity matrix. an identity matrix is a matrix whose uh, entries are like 1 1 0 0 1 like this whose diagonals are 1 this is identity okay diagonals are 1 okay so this is how i can write a minus lambda i dot v Equal to zero. So A is a matrix, lambda scalar. I is a matrix again. Okay. And I told that lambda is information. V is a vector in the direction where this information needs to be projected. Okay. so what we have studied in our maths now that sir kindly pick up this thing a minus lambda v. a minus lambda i okay obviously this is matrix a, lambda i will also be a matrix so matrix minus matrix will be a matrix we just take the determinant of this okay and equate it to zero okay equate it to zero see what i am having why i did this thing this is a let, let me put a question why i did see this multiply by this equal to zero that means let us consider this is first part this is second part if i multiply first by second this is equal to zero so either first is zero either second is zero either both are zero the two numbers multiplication is zero this makes the first is zero second is zero both are zero but it is already told you that a vector cannot be zero 
we are having a non-zero vector according to the property. So this is not zero. So which I can equate to zero? This part. Okay, and the determinant of it because matrix zero it's not doesn't make any sense. Determinant of this is equal to zero. So here I am putting a minus lambda i equal to zero. Fine. So let's get back to your question. What it says, your a is four one two three. Okay, let me write it here. A is four one two three. Okay. So four one two three minus lambda. This is identity. One zero. 0, 1. Okay, so how much it is? Huh. So multiply lambda with inside. Okay, and uh, subtract it from this matrix. So I'm getting a matrix as 4 minus lambda. 1 minus 0 is 1. Then uh, 2. And then uh, 3 minus lambda. This is what I'm getting. And then I need to find a determinant of it. So determinant, just write this thing into determinant. 4 minus lambda, 1, 2, 3 minus lambda. This is equal to 0. And you very well know how to find it. So here, just perform cross multiplication. Okay, do the cross multiplication. So 4 minus lambda. 3 minus lambda minus of 2 into 1 equal to 0. So what it will be? 4, 3 is a 12 minus 4 lambda minus 3 lambda plus lambda square minus 2 equal to 0. So this is lambda square minus 4 lambda minus 3 lambda is minus 7 lambda. 2, sorry, 12 minus 2 is 10. So this is plus 10 equal to 0. And then uh, you can simplify it. So lambda square minus 5 lambda minus 2 lambda plus 10 equal to 0. Take lambda common from here. So lambda minus 5 take minus 2 common from there. So lambda minus 5 equal to 0. Then lambda minus 5 lambda minus 2 equal to 0. Ultimately, I'm getting the two values 2 and 5 for the lambda. So I am having two eigenvalues. This is what I found. The two eigenvalues for my matrix. 2 and 5. All right. I hope you got the point. How to solve this? You know, it's called as characteristic equation. Yeah. The characteristic equation with A minus lambda I. That's what we have solved using determinant and I got the value of lambda is 2 and 5. Then, achha, this is the information. No? These are the two values. I need to project them in some direction. So I need to find vector also. Okay, I need to find eigenvector also. So how to find the eigenvectors? Fine. Now, again, huh. so you are having Lambda 1 is equal to 2. Lambda 2 is equal to 5. Two eigenvalues you got. Let us pick up this one. Okay. So you are having equation as uh, A minus lambda i dot V equal to 0. That's what you are having. Okay, fine. So V is a vector. So you can write it like this xi plus yj vector. And a vector is 1D representation. So I can write it like this x comma y, x and y like this. I can write this is your V. Okay. This is how I can represent V. So A is, your A is 
ओके द मैट्रिक्स ए फोर वन टू थ्री ओके सो पुट इट हियर बैक ओके फोर वन टू थ्री माइनस लैम जस्ट राइट नाउ आई एम टेकिंग टू टू इंटू वन जीरो जीरो वन ओके देन यू आर हैविंग एक्स वाई आउटसाइड एंड देन जीरो लेट मी पुट इट दिस इज अ जीरो वैक्टर एक्चुअली जीरो इज अ जीरो वैक्टर सो राइट इट लाइक दिस ओके एंड देन इफ आई इफ आई डू सॉल्व दिस द मैट्रिक्स विल बी लाइक टू वन टू वन देन टू एंड वन दिस इज वॉट आई एम गेटिंग सी यू कैन मल्टीप्लाई टू है ना इन साइड एंड देन यू कैन सब्ट्रैक्ट फ्रॉम दिस मैट्रिक्स एलिमेंट बाई एलिमेंट यू विल गेट दिस थिंग ओनली टू वन टू वन and this is your xy this is 0 0 okay so you can check that uh, we are getting 2 1 2 1 and uh, if i solve this thing so how do how do you multiply 2 into x plus 1 into y this will be equal to 0 this is how you solve a matrix multiplication and just equate it so here it will be like 2x plus y equal to zero. Another equation will also be the same. 2x uh, plus y equal to zero. All right. So how you have to manage this values of x and y? See, 2x equal to minus y. Take y denominator 2x and take two here. So x upon y equal to minus one upon two. Okay, minus one upon two. Okay, so from here you can see that ये मेरे को first vector. This is my vector for lambda equal to two. This is my vector minus one. But I can write it like this. I can write it like this minus one two. This is my vector for lambda equal to two. I got it. Minus one and two. Okay, fine. So for this eigen value, you got a vector. Minus one and two. Similarly, you can solve for lamb lambda two. That is the second eigen value five. You can put here five. Okay, you can put here five. So let me solve it quickly. So you are having four one. Two three, okay. Two three, you are putting minus five, one zero zero one, okay. And uh, here you are having your vectors, vector x y, and here you are having zero zero. Okay, if I solve this thing, I am getting like uh, minus one. Okay, four minus five is minus one. And then uh, one, and this is uh, two, and this will be like minus two. Okay, then x y equal to zero zero. See, you can if you think now how I got it. It's very simple. Just multiply minus five with all, and then subtract digit by digit. You will get this thing only. It's easy. And then if I solve this matrix, so I will be getting minus x plus y equal to zero, and from here I am getting two x minus two y equal to zero. That's what I am getting. Or if I take two common from here and remove it, so it will be like x minus y equal to zero, or it is equal to, or here it is. X equal to y. Here also, from here also, I am getting the same thing. X equal to y. So ultimately, it's same. X equal to y. So bring y down. One by one. That's it. 
ओके सो योर वेक्टर विल बी योर वेक्टर विल बी वन वन ओके फॉर आइगन वैल्यू फाइव दैट्स व्हाट आई नीड टू कैलकुलेट ओके दैट्स व्हाट आई नीड टू कैलकुलेट दिस इज योर वेक्टर नंबर टू ओके फॉर आइगन वैल्यू फाइव All right. This is how you solve for the values of lambda and v, eigen value and the eigen vectors. The complete solution I gave you. Okay, and we have to use this approach only. Fine. This approach only we have to use in our uh, algorithms, which I am telling you, PC and all these things that we will see ahead. Okay, there, there I will remind you again. All right, so. All right, so eigen value and the eigen vectors. This concept, fine. Um, in yesterday's class, also I told you about that scalar. Hai. This is zero dimension, vector one dimension, matrix two dimension, tensor. Like it's more than two. 2 plus let's say 3 plus this is a tensor okay fine this is the diagram which i have shown you yesterday all right about the tensors and uh, see this matrix you can right now if there is only diagonal so this is diagonal matrix if you are having a only element which present at the diagonal no? then it is called as diagonal matrix and if all the elements are one, then it is identity. Okay. So if all the values are one in the diagonal, then it is identity. If it is not one, then it is a diagonal matrix. And if it's present in this way, that means if there are certain values present in the matrix above, which are non-zero and all the values which are below the diagonal are zero, then this is called as upper triangular matrix. Okay, and if all the values above the diagonal are zero and below the triangle are non-zero, then it, this is called as lower triangular matrix. Okay, fine. This is identity. All right. Fine. This is symmetric and skew symmetric matrix. Okay, symmetric and skew symmetric. Symmetric means if I take the transpose of a matrix and if I get get the same matrix. Okay, that means it's quite clear here uh, written here. Transpose of A is equal to A. All right. So let us suppose this is my matrix A. If I take the transpose of it, that means converting rows to columns, columns to rows. So I'm getting the same matrix itself. So this is symmetric. And this is skew symmetric. That means if I take the transpose, then it's resulting into minus A. A minus sign is there. So such kind of matrix is a skew symmetric. That means A transpose equal to minus A. Okay, fine. And these are the Euclidean form. This is Euclidean form. That means uh, I am having diagonal and above elements are non-zero, rest below the diagonal I am making zero. Okay, so this is Euclidean form. And reduced Euclidean form, that means I am making diagonal as one and rest all zero. This is reduced Euclidean. And all these concepts now are used in solving system of linear equations. This Euclidean, reduced Euclidean. Okay, for solving system of linear equations. And that's what the funda of uh, matrix is. Why we are using the matrix? Why we are studying the matrix? To solve the system of linear equations. Because we are not having only two or three linear equations. We are having many linear equations. There are many columns present in your data set. In your data set, it is a multidimensional data. Okay, it's multidimensional. Okay, and uh, we are having so many rows present in the data. 
so we can't simply solve it we do require some matrix solution for it so we have to represent the data in form of a matrix and then we have to solve it and that's called a system of linear equations see here it is let us suppose you are having like x1 x2 x3 up to xn these are the features and these are the coefficients a12 a13 and so on and these are the outputs b1 b2 b3 and so on okay so this is how we can represent system of linear equations okay ye this is the general notation and you can see that i am having m linear equations and n variables so n variables means n features present in the data and m linear equations means m rows so m rows and n columns and this is how you can represent okay so you are having a data set na like this this is your data set okay fine so here i am having 1 2 3 4 5 n equal to 5 One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, and six. So m equal to six. Six rows and five columns. You can put it here. All right. So this will make uh, your system of linear equations. So this is our data set, and we do transform our data set into system of linear equations. So that's the reason matrix is important. because matrix will help us in solving the system of linear equations in a easy way all right and uh, if all the out outcomes are zero then it is homogeneous system of linear equation that means here you can see if all the outcomes are zero then it is homogeneous system of linear equations all right homogeneous okay and we can solve system of linear equations okay we can solve the system of linear equations and uh, by converting it into augmented matrix into euclidean form or reduced euclidean form and then perform the substitutions i will let you know what it is there are three types of solutions independent solution consistent and unique solution all you have studied in your maths and engineering okay fine so independent consistent and unique these three kind of solutions now we are going to get over the matrix from uh, linear equations okay so if you are having the equation like this 2x plus 2y equal to 4 4x plus 4y equal to this is dependent okay that means here if we, if we get dependent equations then the system is having infinitely many solutions that means the graph if you make the graph of these equation they will represent the same line so 2x plus 2y equal to 4 and 4x plus 4y equal to 8 though we are having different equations but they will still represent the same line so it's infinitely many solutions independent solution means we are having one solution so such kind of equations we are having so we will solve them to get the value of x and y the answer is 2 comma 3 you know how to solve the equation the matrix also we are solving the equation i will let you know from simple substitution also now we can solve this solve the equations okay so this is independent that means there will be an intersection of these two lines at some particular point and this is the point where they will intersect there is inconsistent also that means if there is no solution for the equations okay that means they are not at all intersecting for example x plus 2y equal to 9 and 2x plus 4y equal to 7 they are not independent but they are also not intersecting these two lines are the parallel lines so there is no solution for them it's inconsistent okay fine 
all right so next i am having a problem of inverse of a matrix all right so inverse i think i will let you know ahead okay 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 fine anyways inverse of a matrix fine if it came na right now so let me explain inverse also see we can calculate inverse of a matrix that is written as uh, a inverse okay inverse of a matrix all right so to calculate the inverse of a matrix here is the solution i am using determinant okay i am using determinant so the matrix is given to you 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 2 9 this is the matrix okay and you can find the inverse of it using determinant how calculate the determinant of the complete matrix first the answer is minus 36 okay then the answer is minus 36 then you have to calculate the minors of the given matrix and how you are going to find the minors c minors are calculated as see the first one is m11 m11 means first row first column so this is m11 first row first column so you are going to consider 5 6 and 2 9 okay this is minor 5 6 and 2 9 m11 then m12 it will be it will be 4 6 7 9 that will be m12 then m13 that will be Four, five, seven, two. Okay, just what wh what you are doing? If you are having a matrix like this, entries. So M one one, one one. That means hide this row, this column and this row. So just consider this part. This will be your M one one, first minor. Then M one two means. Okay. Hide second column, first row, है ना? M one two, यानी कि first row second column hide. So you are having this, 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 this. So consider these values and find the determinant. So I am calculating all M one one, M one two, M one three, then M two one, M two two, M two three, then M three one, M three two, M three three. All the determinants just by hiding rows and the columns and what are the values I am having? I am just calculating this minors. So all the minors you have to calculate. Okay. So once you got the minors, all right, or you call them as cofactors, minors or the cofactors, whatever you want to say, you can. All right. So. these values now you have to make a matrix just make a matrix of these whatever you got from above 33 6 minus 27 this is minus 6 okay 33 minus 6 minus 27 then 12 minus 12 minus 12 okay then minus ha huh, cofactors okay no no wait a minute this is correct this is absolutely correct one thing i want to tell okay so the values you got na the values which you got here are okay let me put put in the matrix okay you got you got 33 minus 6 minus 27 then 12 minus 12 and minus 12 Then minus three, minus six, and minus three. This is what you got. But remember one thing. This this operation is not complete. According to the position of the elements. 
according to the position of the elements. See, what is the position of 33? Its first row, first column. So its position is 1, 1. So, you know, you have to take minus 1 to the power sum of the positions. That means rows and the columns. That means 1, 1. So it will be minus 1 ka square, that is 1. So you have to multiply this thing with 33. So answer is 33. Then minus 6. It is first row, second column. Okay. So minus 1 to the power, first row, second column. So it is minus 1 to the power 3. That is minus 1. So multiply minus 1 with minus 6. Answer is 6. Okay. Now, minus 27. Its position is 2, 2. Sorry. 1, 2. Okay. Its position is first row, not 1, 2. It's 1, 3. Okay. Third column. All right. So, we are going to take minus 1, 1 plus 3. Okay. So, first row, third column. It will be minus 1 key power 4. It will be 1. So, multiply 1 with minus 27. The answer is minus 27 only. Here it is. Minus 27. So, this is how we got the values. 33, 6 and minus 27. Now, if you want to check out for call uh, this row number 2. So, 12. It is at row 2, column 1. So, minus 1 to the power row 2, column 1. It will be minus 1 to the power 3. That will be minus 1. So, multiply minus 1 with 12. Answer should be minus 12. See here. Minus 12. Same. Same thing for this. This, this, this. Just position to the power minus 1. And then multiply with these values. This is the matrix which you are getting. It's called as a cofactors. Okay. Now, now it is saying that, now it is saying, ki find the adjoint of a matrix by taking the transpose of the cofactor. So, these are the cofactors. I need to take the transpose of it. Take the transpose of it. So, transpose means again, row to column, column to rows. So, this is the transpose. And you have to divide transpose by the determinant. That will be the inverse. Okay, that will be the inverse. So, this is adjoint. Okay, this is adjoint. Adjoint of a matrix. And you have to divide adjoint of a matrix by by determinant. So, that will be equal to the inverse. Very important formula. We also did study in our engineering and there we did the maths and uh, at my time also calculating inverse of a matrix was something trouble. Okay. Uh, we have to be now very much attentive while solving all these because it's the maths now and any number, any multiplication, subtraction, addition you did wrong, that means everything is wrong. Maths is all about the concentration. Okay, so any calculation you do wrong, everything will be wrong. So how you initiated to calculate inverse of a matrix? Calculate the first thing is to determinant, then find the minors, then arrange the minors, and then take this according to the position. That will be the cofactors. Take the transpose of cofactors at joint and then divide that joint with the determinant. Okay, with the determinant. That means with every value, that means here is a 36, my determinant is minus 36. Divide minus 36 with every value. Okay, divide minus 36 with every value. So 33, 33 by minus 36, that will be 11 by minus uh, 12. Okay, then minus 12 by minus 36. That will be 1 upon 1 by 3. So you can see. Minus 11 by 12, 1 by 3, 1 by 12 and so on. This is inverse. 
there are other ways also to, to find the inverse i will show you that's why we are spending time on linear algebra to understand what are the core concepts of linear algebra matrices okay so here are the properties of inverse of a matrix that if a is non singular see inverse can also only be calculated inverse can only be calculated you have read the property now where determinant is not zero determinant should not be equal to zero then only inverse is calculated else matrix is singular its inverse cannot be calculated so this is the step number 1 a determinant is coming zero you can't find the inverse it's a singular matrix okay we have already read the property above okay related to this determinant thing okay show you again what was the property so okay here are the properties okay geometric effect kramer's rule okay i think i did mention in this topic kramer's rule okay non singular its determinant is non zero singular means determinant is zero all right so just remember this point fine all right so there are certain properties of the inverse of a matrix that means inverse ka inverse is equal to the matrix again if i find the inverse of a inverse of a matrix the answer is the matrix itself and if a and b are non singular matrices okay then ab inverse is b inverse dot a inverse very important property ab ka inverse is equal to b inverse multiplied by a inverse very important property remember if a is non singular then a transpose ka inverse is a inverse transpose again important if it is non singular that means inverse can be calculated and this is how we can write and if a is any matrix a inverse is its inverse then a into a inverse is equal to a inverse into a is equal to identity again very important property so all the properties are important okay fine so this is how we can calculate the inverse of a matrix now unit vectors i told you we in our initial class only unit vector magnitude of length 1 this is how you represent vector divided by magnitude is a unit vector ha huh. there is one more concept here in the vectors that is span span of a vector okay span of a vector important concept see the span of v1 v2 up to vn that means i am taking the set of vectors v1 v2 v3 up to vn the span of the vectors is just all of the vectors that can be represented by the combinations of these that means i can represent them in the combination of themselves then it is called as a spencer what does it mean can you show us okay fine uh the span of v1 v2 vn is c1 v1 plus c2 v2 plus so on cn vn okay this is the span of the vectors and here is the example if this is v1 this is v2 the span of v1 and the v2 i can write c1 10 c2 01 this is c1 plus c2 where c1 and c2 are the real numbers and the span of the vectors 10 and 01 is the set of all the vectors in r square that means in this real number set again this is example number 2 for for example again i am having 100 010 so you can write like this c1 into v1 c2 into v2 c1 c2 c3 okay since again c1 and c2 are the real numbers in r a real number so the span of the vector this and this are the set of all the vectors in 
R3. Whose the second and the third entries are the same. Okay, so this is the span. Again, vectors, take it, span of vectors is just all of the vectors that can be represented by linear combination of these. Okay, can I make a linear combination of existing vectors? Very much important. Span is a very important concept. Linear combination of these set of vectors only. That is called as a span. Okay, so here now, I, I took in the example number one, two vectors I took. C1, C2 are your, the numbers, real numbers, which are between 1 to n. Any real number between 1 to n. Okay, where n are the number of vectors. Okay, so uh, right now I am having two vectors. So, I am having two vectors. So, the value of C1 and C2 will be 1. Yoga. This will be the value of C1 and C2. So, I can take uh, the value of I as 0.5. Now, 0.5 is 1.5. I can take value of I is 1.5. So, so, any vector, any vector which is 1.5 i plus 1.5 j that is that is also coming in a span in this span of v1 and v2 that's right according to the property that means i is greater than 1 less than 2 so if i take i equal to 1.5 and i if i make a vector using this C1, C2. If I make a vector using C1, C2. Okay, so it should come under a span of V1, V2. Similarly, if I take 1.7. Okay, if I take any value 1.7 or something like that, that, that's coming under the span. Okay, so CI is any real number. Any real number. And the i, c i is between 1 to n. This is the concept of span. Very, very important. I will take further more examples to elaborate the concept of span. Okay. A linearly dependence, independence, you very well know that linearly dependent means I can represent the vectors. Okay. So, you know, they, they are what defining the span only. Okay. So, if these are the set of, set of vectors that are linearly dependent, linearly dependent means I can write V2 in terms of V1. This is what linearly dependence means. Okay, so the vectors, this, this are linearly dependent if and only if there is some value not at all zero. That means, that means for, for example, x plus y equal to 5, 2x plus 2y equal to 10. If this is vector v1, this is vector v2. So I can write v2 as, v2 as 2 into v1. This is linearly dependence. And 2 is not 0. They told it should not be 0. So, C1, V1, C2, V2. Okay, that means any value of C1, any value of C2, I can take. But it that should be linearly dependent. So, here the value is 2, which came. Alright, that is the case. Fine, and here now what they did, they took C1 common from this equation. From this complete entire equation, they took C1 common. C1 is not equal to 0 because it is coming in the denominator. Na? 
So they took C1 common. Okay, and this is equal to 0. That means, for instance, if C1 is not equal to 0, V1 will be written as a linear combination of other vectors. That means I can write V1 by the linear combination of other vectors. If I can do this thing, that is the span. If I can, if I can write a vector as a linear combination, okay, with a linear combination of other vectors. Okay. Written linear combination of other vectors. That means that this is linearly dependent. And that's what I did. I am writing V2 as a combination of with respect to V1. This is linearly dependence. Here also this is linearly dependence. On the other hand, if the only solution of this equation is 0, that means they are linearly dependent since none of them can be written as a linear combination of other vectors. Is ci equal to 0? If there is only solution to this equation, is ci equal to 0? Okay, so like this thing also. All right. So this is another example. I need to illustrate more examples and elaborate more, illustrate and elaborate more related to span. Okay, so it's a span of vectors. How you can represent a vector in, a, in terms of another vectors? What is this value of C? Okay, so just right now I told you, linearly representation. If I can represent a vector in form of another vector, okay, that will be a span for it. That is coming in a span for it. Such a concept, very important. All right, so I hope this makes a sense for you in today's lecture, isn't it? Let me stop sharing. Let me stop recording also.